Robert Plank Show episode 176 Leverage skills to run virtual summits, create products, and cause massive transformation with entrepreneurial business coach Bailey Richard. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Robert Plank Show where we talk about building an online business. Our guest is Bailey Richer, and she's a business coach who helps individuals launch profitable online enterprises as entrepreneurs, which means that they're a respected expert in their field and they create value and generate income by sharing their life experience, knowledge, and passion with others in a manner that supports their ideal lifestyles. And we're going to talk about these cool things called virtual summits. So Bailey, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. I'm glad that you're here. So can you tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and what sets you apart from everyone else? Absolutely. So my name is Bailey, and I consider myself a business coach for infopreneurs. And an infopreneur is somebody who leverages their life experience, knowledge, and passion to create informational products. So those could be eBooks, online courses, virtual summits, workshops. I was not originally a business coach. I actually went to school for engineering and worked as an environmental engineering consultant in California for many years until I had a little bit of a quarter life crisis, as they say. Around the age of 25, I decided I didn't want to work corporate anymore. So I left and went to get my master's degree at MIT, where I studied entrepreneurship and launched my very first infopreneur business, um, which was actually in the travel industry. I wrote books. I did public speaking. I worked with college students to prepare them for international travel abroad for their study abroad semesters mostly. And along the way, people started asking me for advice on how they could do the same thing, turn their life experience into income. And so I started doing courses about self-publishing books or doing online courses. And eventually, I just realized that I liked doing that so much, um, I pivoted to doing that full time, which is what I do now. And what I'm hearing about about your your step-by-step process other than a lot of us entrepreneurs get bored and, and have to switch gears and stuff like that. From A lot of what I'm hearing as far as that, that side of it from the courses and then even what you and I talked about a couple of minutes before this call started was just that this pattern of instead of trying to reinvent the wheel or copy someone else or whatever, like you look at what it is that you do over and over, something that you've mastered and you just kind of teach that. Is that right? Absolutely. Well, I firmly believe that you need to be leveraging your own skills and your own life experience to create that profitable business because ultimately, not only are you going to be experienced in that skill and able to teach it thoroughly to other people, but your backstory, the way that you got into that hobby or that skill is going to play a significant part in convincing people to hire you to teach them that skill as well. And can you talk about that as far as so because there it sounds like there's the there's the course creation or the product creation or the book creation or whatever people want to say there's that side of it right there's the the product itself and then what what you mentioned or what I'm uh, what, what I'm uh, interpreting from what you're saying is that there's also the side of the marketing part of it and getting people in the door and a big factor a big piece of that is in your own frustrations, emotions, your own story, what led you to that path, and then they can relate to you. Is that right? Yes, that's absolutely true. What you're basically doing is building a business brand around yourself, and a very large part of that is your own personal journey. Number one, people want to be able to relate to you as a human being. They want to know what struggles that you've been through. They want to understand your journey. They want to know um, you better and so that they can ultimately learn to trust you. But also what they would like to see in your backstory is the transformation that you have gone through. So you need to be able to prove to people that you were in place A, you had a realization that you wanted to change, you did some sort of process, learned some sort of skill, and it ultimately got you to point B. As an infopreneur, what you are selling them is the ability to transform from point A to point B like you did, but in a much faster manner, because instead of fumbling around and trying to figure out the process to get there, you as the infopreneur will be able to teach it to them and help them achieve their results in much quicker time. And I like the way that you put that, and I think that a lot of people should really pay attention and maybe even rewind 15 or 30 seconds and listen to that, that last part again, because the way that you put that, Bailey, is that, well, first of all, if if you say, okay, well, I was just like you, you know, I didn't know how to set up a website or make a podcast or publish a book, book or whatever, if you just stop there, then someone would say, okay, well, great, you were just like me, but that's where I am too, so I found someone who I can relate to, but 
what what else? And so by having the the transformation part of the backstory, the point A to point B, they can say, okay, good. Like they were stuck just like I am as far as publishing a book. Now I can uh, follow their steps because now they've done it. But then uh, a really important piece of what you said there as well is that they can transform but they can do it faster than you did because then if someone looks at you and says okay well this person has 50 books or if this person has a hundred thousand sales then then the doubt sets in and now I'm now with all those pieces in place now someone can say okay number one they are where I they were where where I am now number two they went through this process but number three because they did it now they can kind of time travel a little bit and show me how to do it faster so that I can also attain it as well so it sounds like it's hitting on all the right points as far as the copywriting goes yeah absolutely I think that you know infopreneurs get a little caught up sometimes in portraying themselves as the expert they want to be seen as you know having high authority in their particular niche and there's nothing wrong with that we certainly want to come across as competent but you also want your clients to know that the transformation that you've gone through is achievable right and so can you kind of along those lines could you walk us through a case study of yours or of something like that where you are selling something and you positioned it in such a way that that you did it they can do it but it's also achievable sure i mean i can just use myself and as as an example since i didn't get prior permission to talk about any clients on this podcast but um so basically uh what i say in my story is that i am using my previous position as an engineer in my corporate life to explain where i used to be and so whenever i'm talking to potential clients normally that's where they are they are working the nine to five they're not enjoying it there's things that they want out of life that they're not currently getting from that position, the freedom, the autonomy, more time with their family, more money on their own terms, things like that. And that's where I used to be many years ago. So that's where we start the journey. And then I take them through the transformation. I say, well, I wanted to get to a new place. I wanted to get to point B. And so I tell them you know, what my goal was, what my point B was at that time, which was being able to support myself financially without having you know, to answer to a boss, having that more freedom and autonomy in life. And I tell them that the process through which I was able to achieve that was bec by becoming an infopreneur and starting an infopreneur business. So I take them through the journey that I went through and I say, I developed a, I found a skill that I was really good at. I started my business. I was able to develop products that allowed me to get to this lifestyle that I have now. So now I am at point B. So my clients are still at point A back in the corporate job, but they want to be where I am. So I tell them exactly what my process was for starting and launching an infopreneur business. That's how I got from A to B. I tell them that it is achievable because I am doing it right now. I am at point B. I make sure that that's what they want, that you know my ideal client wants to be where I am. I tell them it's achievable because they can see that I am living it and ultimately um, we end up working together to get them to point B with me as well. Okay, cool. And then so along those lines when you're when you're figuring out either, you know, for a client or for yourself what to say as far as, you know, how, telling them about that story and like what they can accomplish in the transformation, how do you do that without getting too off topic or being too long-winded in the sales copy? Sure, absolutely. Well, one of the things that I encourage all of my clients to do is actually to go out and talk to some of who their potential clients might be as we're developing their business and try to look for some key words or phrases that you often hear um, a lot of your potential clients saying that you might want to include in your copy. So that's one little strategy. And then I think that the, the key really is you think about this journey that we're talking about right now, this is actually what you're going to be writing in your about page. This is what's going to be going on the about page of your website. And so we want to stay focused on the journey from a from point A through the transformation to point B. And we want to keep all of that information that would be relevant to a person who is interested in achieving those goals. So at the end of the day, whenever you're reading through that, you can stay on topic by asking yourself, is this little sentence, is this little piece of information that I am giving the audience in this paragraph relevant to helping them understand where I was, how I got there, and where I am now? And if the answer is no, then you don't need to include it. 
That makes a lot of sense. So, th so that way the focus is on them and not about you. It's about, you know, what, what's in it for them. And I like the way that you put that where someone can just go through each and every sentence with a fine tooth comb and really quickly take out the, the extra fluff. And that way what's remaining is all about the person who you want to buy. Absolutely. I think that a lot of times people write in copy on their website, especially in the about page, they, they think that it's supposed to be about me, the infopreneur, the business owner, but that's not true. Every single thing that you write and that you put on your website, including your own bio, is supposed to be geared towards your potential customer in convincing them to hire you. So even your bio isn't really about you. That makes a lot of sense, and so, and I'm I'm looking at um at some of your your courses, like you have a course about you know self publishing and virtual summit school and how to make a course. I mean, could you tell us about some of these courses that you created and and maybe like what what was the the first one maybe and just what was your your process with these kinds of things? Sure. Well, actually, I did things a little bit in reverse. So because I was still doing my travel business at the time, I started pivoting to teaching all of these infopreneur skills. My very first course was actually my um, self-publishing skills course, selfpubskills.com. And that particular course is exactly what it sounds like, teaching people how to take their manuscript and turn it into sale as an ebook with major retailers online using free tools that are available to you on the web. And the reason that that was my very first infopreneur course was because that was a skill that so many of my friends and acquaintances and family members wanted to learn. It was only after I did that course and decided to pivot to teaching infopreneurship full time that I started putting effort into my Infopreneur Institute course, which is now actually my flagship course. And that particular course teaches people who are at the very beginning stages of all of this, who have just decided, I think I'd like to become an infopreneur. It teaches them my six step process for launching an infopreneur business business from scratch, starting all the way at the very beginning with choosing a niche to operate in and leading them all the way down to step six, which is a sales, creating a sales funnel for their revenue streams and products. My latest course is called Virtual Summit School, which we're in pre-sale mode for right now, actually. And uh, that course is all about how you can launch your very own virtual summit to grow your revenue, establish your authority in your niche and explode your email list in 90 days. Awesome. So, so a couple of things about that. First of all, what's what's cool about your uh, these some of these courses that you just explained, like the selfpubskills.com or infopreneurinstitute.com or virtualsummitschool.com, is that they're all they're all the same template, right? So that that way you didn't have to start from scratch. You didn't have to make some brand new website. They're all kind of the same the same design so that people know that they're on the right place but then also if they're clicking around on, on your various courses it's like if they had to lay at the land of one of these web pages they had to lay at the land of the other and the other thing that sticks out to me as you're you were explaining this journey is that it sounds like it sounds like there's a, a lot of your thought process involves just just listening right just kind of getting your finger on the pulse of what people are saying because you like you said you made the book uh, the book course first when you were transitioning from the travel stuff, but then based on, well, first of all, one level to that was listening to their keywords and phrases, and now that kind of writes the copy for you. But then what I'm also hearing, and let me know if I'm wrong here, I'm also hearing that from the self-publishing course, you heard of a need to have their whole online business uh, to be in place, and then from the, having the whole online business in place, then there was a need for this virtual summit school. Is that about right? That sounds about right. Yeah. I mean, it. I think that the journey, that's a very oversimplified look at the journey. But in general, yes, um, we do want to be looking at our clientele and we do want to see what their needs are and ultimately find services and create products that are going to serve those needs. And so while, you know, it might make more sense to say, oh, well, I need to create my flagship course and then I'll create all these other little courses that teach subtopics. The reality is that sometimes in business, it doesn't always work that way. And and uh, in my transition, you know, I decided to do the self-publishing skills course first because that was the most present need for my clients that I saw in front of me at that time. And as you stated, then out of that came this um, need for me to teach them how to start their business from scratch in a more organized manner. And then out of that, I've been able to develop other courses for separate skills that they have said that they would like to learn. Yes. 
I like I like that mindset. It's like you're going for the low hanging fruit every time because it it sort of drives me crazy when uh, whether it's a coaching client or, or whoever who says, "Oh, sh- like how do I make a website? What do I make?" And I say, "Make a website like this or make a book like this." And they say, "Great, I'll make 50." And I'm thinking, "No, don't don't plan all this stuff. Just make what's what's the best for you right now, and then to kind of pivot into the next thing." And so, w- what kind of what draws my attention is so you, we mentioned a few times there's a thing called a a virtual summit and so just to just to kind of give you a, a a starting point or some context i guess like from from what i when i'm coming from is usually when someone tells me that there's like a like a summit i think in terms of like a like a tele summit like an audio only kind of thing and then when i hear about a virtual summit uh, what i hear is that someone's gathered maybe you know 10 or 20 experts in a kind of a thing and there'll be these different topics uh, but when someone says virtual summit that's what gets in my head. So am I am I on the right track or is it completely different or what is a virtual summit uh, in your world? I think that you're right. So a virtual summit is basically an online conference. So if you think about what a real conference is like, you would find the sales page online, buy your ticket, fly to a city, get a hotel, and you would sit in that hotel for the entire weekend listening to experts share their knowledge. You'd take notes and then you'd go home and you'd find ways to implement that information into your business or your life. Well, a virtual summit's the exact same concept, only you don't have to travel anywhere. You don't have to go to a hotel. You're going to be watching all of these experts deliver their content online. And so for most virtual summits, it is actually going to be video and audio. It is a better way for the guest speakers to be able to connect with the audience at home. Um, But I mean, I guess you could just do audio only if you wanted. But I hosted my very first virtual summit, the Infopreneur Summit this past summer, and it was a huge success for my business. Um, I had attended several virtual summits before and had heard people talk about from a business owner perspective as the host, how it could be beneficial to your business. But I was a little bit skeptical about the results that they were touting. I decided to go ahead and create my own. And I went into it with pretty low expectations, just figuring, well, if it really didn't provide the returns that everyone said, and it was a wash, then so be it. At least I got to try it out. But man, I am telling you that I am a virtual summit evangelist now. Um, There are very few marketing techniques, perhaps none that I know of, that in such record time can give me the kind of benefits that hosting my own virtual summit gave me. So I encourage everybody, um, if you're looking to take your business to the next level, virtual summits are where it's at right now. Cool. So, I mean, I don't want to give away the things that are in your course, but just in like kind of a a, like a rough 100,000 foot view. I mean, what should someone do if they say, okay, well, this sounds great. And, you know, I I want to have a virtual summit uh, that that I host and I want to have it on this topic and I want to bring these people in and get this traffic. I mean, what are the steps for someone to make their own virtual summit? Sure. Well, um, I actually give away my entire, uh, like you said, 10,000 foot view um, of the process for launching a virtual summit in my free ebook. If you just go to virtualsummitschool.com, you can download a set of resources. There's an ebook in there which explains my 12-step process and also a planning worksheet and a few other things that you can grab totally free. And uh, basically what I have developed is a 90-day process for launching your virtual summit and it's three months long and each one of those months is a separate phase. So in the very first phase, we're just completely obsessed with planning out the summit. I mean, a virtual summit, albeit virtual and online, is still an event. So you still have to have certain logistics nailed down. When is your virtual summit going to be? How many days is it going to be? What is the name of your summit? What is the overall umbrella topic of your summit? And what are the subtopics that each one of your speakers is going to be talking about? How are you going to brand it? So the first phase is all about planning. The second phase is all about creating. So that means figuring out your technological systems, setting up your sales funnel, recording all of the interviews with your guest speakers. And the final phase is all about launching your summit. The first three weeks of that month is going to be completely dedicated to promoting your summit on social media, to all of your email lists, encouraging all of your guest speakers to promote the event to their email list, hosting giveaways. And the final week of that Uh, particular phase three is going to be the execution of your summit, actually sitting at your computer that week and putting the interviews live according to the agenda that you have given your attendees. But that's the basic overview of how you do a summit. Awesome. And I like the way that that you you lay this out. And it's kind of along the lines of the way that you lay out your other courses in that, you know, a lot of people out there, they, they might just make a course just about 
click funnels or just about sam cart or just about whatever like that that is but what i'm what i'm hearing from you as far as your thought process and as far as you know there are different websites and things is that is that you kind of combine these different things and combine them in a logical order that way it's not just a mess and i mean you know like even before we were talking um about about the virtual summit school and things like that just even the thought of putting on a a virtual summit without any kind of plan or without hearing from someone who's done it before just sounds like a nightmare right because it's like okay i have to get all these speakers nailed down and i have to get all these dates nailed down so so what i'm hearing from you and and is this right or not but it it sounds like by by having uh your, your virtual summit school training they can kind of make sense of all the noise and they don't have to be running around and putting out fires because in that first month there's a clear things of things to do and things not to do and the same in the other months but it sounds like this really simplifies it and this makes it so that it's very clear about what questions need to be answered and what they should be doing right in front of them is that right Absolutely. I mean, one of the biggest tenets of my business is that I don't believe in being overwhelmed in business. I mean, you see some entrepreneurs that are just running around like chickens with their heads cut off all the time. And I am not one of those people. And I work with my clients to make sure that whatever project they're undertaking, they don't feel overwhelmed, that they have a very clear process for what it is that they're supposed to be doing right now and the tasks that are going to be coming up soon in the future in order to get whether it's a course or a summit or whatever off the ground successfully. And so for me, I guess it's just my engineer brain. I believe that means a very clear, you know, enumerated process, step one, step two, step three. And that's exactly what we go through in the virtual summit school. And in addition to all of the video content and the tech tutorials, you're also getting tons of things to just help you accomplish your summit more easily, like um, video scripts and email templates and a 90 day launch plan that tells you literally what you're supposed to be doing every single day of those 90 days in order to get your summit off the ground successfully. So no overwhelm. That's what I believe. I like that. And even as I'm looking through your different offers, it, they seem like just very, very thoughtful things to put together, right? Because you have like, like you said, like there are templates on, on how to, you know, how to say this or, or what, or how to ask this. And, and I like that how it's not just, here's some videos, blah, or here's a checklist, blah. It's like, there's also the bonuses just so that other people can get unstuck in the places where you got stuck along the way. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Well, I mean, I think that the idea behind a course, in my opinion, is that you're not just, you know, sharing knowledge through videos, but you are actually trying to help your students accomplish their goal. And so as the course instructor, I feel that it is my responsibility to give them every single piece of material that they could possibly need to successfully accomplish that goal. That's my viewpoint whenever I create a course. I like that attitude and it, and it sounds like that's the kind of thing where if everyone constructed their offer in that way in, in that kind of mindset of well don't leave anything out and have have everything in there that's important but without just overwhelm just for the sake of overwhelm then now that's something where anyone can pick it up and use your same steps and your same templates and your same tools and get a, a somewhat similar result as you if not better. Absolutely. And as the owner of the course, it is my goal and my hope that ultimately, in this particular case, virtual summits, that they'll be able, my students will successfully be able to put on a virtual summit because that means only positive things for me. They're going to come back and they're going to give me a positive testimonial about the course that I'll be able to use. I can ask them to be on a Facebook Live video or do an interview with me about their success with my course. I mean, ultimately, a an infopreneur who is doing courses and selling informational products products should want their students to succeed. I agree. And I think that what's also great about what you've laid out here in the virtual summit school is that not only will the people who, who take it be able to put out their own virtual summit, but I'm sure that when they come back to you, then they'll come to you with your next big idea because they say, okay, well, great. Now I have a book. Now I have a website. Now I have the virtual summit, but then they'll come up to you with something that gets the spark going for whatever next course that you make. Oh, absolutely. Yes. It's by building those relationships with former students that I'm able you know, to keep in contact with them and hear what their upcoming needs are. So then I can provide products and services that will um, help them fulfill those needs. Makes a lot of sense to me. And so, yeah, so when I see this, this virtual summit thing, I mean, it looks, it looks awesome. And I think that kind of like we said, like it, it's a, uh, 
it's a, a tried and true idea, but with the current, you know, technology as far as the, you know, video streaming and as far as being able to connect with all these people, it's something that with the technology we have, like everyone needs to be doing it and it's easier and it's, it's, it sounds like it can make things fun for people again. And so the place for everyone to check out that offer of virtual summit school and launch their own virtual summit in 90 days with that three month process is virtual summit school.com. Is that right, Bailey? Yes, that's correct. Awesome. So everyone should go right there to virtualsummitschool.com. So Bailey, I really appreciate you being on the program and you had a lot of cool insights about just the, the mindset people need to be in and the action they need to take and everything in between. So thanks so much for coming on the program. I really appreciate being here. Thank you. Hey, this is Robert Plank, and I just wanted to wish you a very awesome day. And be sure to go to robertplank.com to check out our other episodes. And thank you so much. Hey.